Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make this grid that changes their size based on where your mouse is. I made a series on introduction to creative coding and in this tutorial, we're going to focus on nested loop and 2D arrays. But we're also going to touch on how we can use the mouse X and mouse Y built in variables to manipulate the size of the squares. So first, I'm going to declare three variables columns, rows, and the size. And I'm going to set the size to be 20. Then inside the setup function, I am going to calculate the number of calls and the number of rows. And we can do that by divided width by the size. And for rows, it would be height by the size. And now we're going to use a nested loop to draw the grid. And we can do that by first writing the first for loop and then the second for loop. And we can use the rect function that takes in four arguments, the x and y location of the top left corner of the square and then the width and the height. So it will be i times size, j times size, and then size and size. I've done a few coding tutorials on this already, so if you want a little bit more practice, you can check those out. Let's play. Okay, so now we have a grid of 20 by 20 squares. Right now, the size of the squares is at 20, right? So actually, I'm going to change the name of this variable to spacing. And the reason is because I am going to create a new array, 2D array actually, called size, right? And the size is going to be depending on the location of our mouse, right? So first we want to create a 2D array that holds all the values of the size of each of the square in this grid. So we first start by declaring an array called size and then Within the setup function, we're going to create this 2D array and we can use a nested loop to do that. So for let i equals to zero, i less than calls, i plus plus. Within the first loop, we want to create empty arrays of the size columns. And then the other nested loop we will give it some values. So if we set it at the same value at 10, we need to not forget that right now there's no size variable. We need to put in the index location i and j here as well. And then we can click play. And you can see that because the rex function takes in x and y location of the top left corner. When we change the size to 10, it is at the top left corner of our grid. So what we want to do is that first, we want to set the mode of the rectangle to be center. And what this does is that, let's click play. You can see that the X and Y location that we put as the first two arguments are now at the center of the square, similar to an ellipse function. There are two more things that we need to change. Actually, just one thing, but we have to change in two locations, which is we want to move the square half the spacing to the right and half the spacing down. And we can do that by put spacing divided by two plus. And there you go. So now if we change this to the same size as the spacing, we get what we got before, right? So now we can see that the square is at the center of each of the grid. But that's not what we want either. What we want is that we want the size to change according to the mouse location. If you look at the original graphics, you can see that the location of the mouse, the closer it is to that grid, the smaller the size. So inside this expression here, what we're going to do is that we're going to use a function called dist 
and this is a function that takes in four arguments. The first two are the location of the first point, and then the last two are the location of the second point. So what we're going to put as arguments will be the mouse location, so mouse x and mouse y, right? So it's going to be the location of where our mouse is. And then the third and the fourth location will be the location of the center of each of the squares. So that would be i times spacing and j times spacing. And actually, we also want this spacing plus 2 divided by 2, right? Ah! <laughs> The thing that I did wrong is that I put this whole thing, this whole for loop within the set of function, which is only called once. Silly me. Okay, so what I need is that I need this whole 2D array to be inside the draw function. Okay, that's why it doesn't move because it's only called once. So once we have this, whoa, isn't that cool? But you can see why it's like this, right? Because right now we have not scaled anything. And then so the size of the squares are just like really large where it is far away from the mouse. So we can set another variable called scale. Let's set it at, let's say, 0 0.1. And then we just multiply this whole expression here by scale. OK, so now. This is more similar to what we had. It's pretty cool, huh? All right, so you can actually play around. What I did in the original image is that I set the color of the background to black. And then I set the square to have no stroke and the field color to be at 220. And there you go. You can play around with the size of the grid, the color of the background, the color of the squares, and even the scale. That actually going to change quite a bit of how this is going to look. Can you see? You can change the shapes as well. So there is a lot that you can do. But this is pretty neat because it allows you to create some type of graphics that is able to interact with the user. So give it a try.